You'll notice that it is dark in the room, um, and you'll also notice I have on the board um, a set of the glow-in-the-dark stars that you can put on your ceiling, and then when you, you go to bed at night and turn off the lights, they glow. Um, so, an interesting question to ask is, you know, why are these things glowing, first of all? And second of all, is it, you know, can we shine, it's white light, we know, that is, is, is hitting it all day, and then when you turn off the lights, it's making it glow. What happens if we shine just pure light of different colors on it? So, I have a few laser pointers here. I have a, a red laser, I have a green laser, and I have a bluish violet laser. So, I'm going to shine all three of these lasers on the stars, and we're going to see what happens. So you should try to predict at this point what you think is going to happen. Should the stars glow whatever color of light is shown on them, perhaps nothing will happen at all, or perhaps they'll glow just like we expect normally with white light. So we're going to start with red, and here we go. Shining the red laser on the stars, and there is no effect whatsoever. Nothing is happening. So let's go with green. Once again, nothing is happening. You'll notice the green does seem to scatter a little bit, but the stars are pretty translucent. And it's, they're still in the plastic, too. But there's no glow, which is really what we're looking for. So that leaves us with the bluish purple. Here we go. And there you can see you get a pretty dramatic effect. You get a lot of glowing from the stars uh, as we shine the light over it. Why is that happening? That's rather unexpected. So, the first thing we have to do is ask ourselves, what, what makes the stars glow? Why are the stars glowing? Now, the reason for that is because the stars ha are, are obviously made up of atoms, just like everything else. And we can model an atom as having a nucleus and having electrons. So let's say, let's just say we, for the case of simplicity, that there's an electron here and it's in the ground state orbital, which is the lowest possible uh, place to be. Now, you can put energy into the system and excite the electron up to a higher level orbital. So, there's a certain amount of energy required to do that. Anything less than that will do absolutely nothing. And this is really interesting because oftentimes people expect that uh, you know, the energy of, uh, of, of an electron as it jumps up would be, you know, if I put in five uh, units of energy, and then I wait a little while and I put another five units of energy, and if it only needs ten units of energy to get up, then that should work. It turns out that if this needs some number of energy units to uh, jump to the next energy level, I need that amount of energy or more put in at one time or nothing happens at all. So let's say we have that amount of energy. So we put it in, and it ex gets excited up to the next energy state. So now our electron is up here. Uh, due to different effects in quantum mechanics, uh, it is unstable in that state and will fall back down to the ground state. And we know that it absorbed energy when it jumped up, so as it jumps back down, it will emit energy. It will emit energy in the form of light, in the form of a photon. And that is what we see as the glowing of the stars. This is actually the same thing that happens if you have a glow stick. When you crack a glow stick, chemicals are released that interact, and uh, electrons are excited up, and when they fall back down, you get the glow of the glow stick. So, why then violet light is not red and green? So, on the spectrum of light, we know that blue and violet, which we'll say is blue slash violet, have a very high frequency, which we'll write as F. Red light, on the other hand, is at the other end of the spectrum. And red has a very low frequency. And it turns out that energy, oh, green is somewhere in between here, uh, but we're going to focus on the edge cases. So, uh, it turns out that energy, the energy found in a photon, uh, and a photon is just one particle of light, so the energy found in a photon is equal to just a constant, which is h, called Planck's constant, times the frequency. 
So energy is proportional to the frequency of the light that's hitting it. So a high frequency color, such as blue and violet, is going to have more energy than a low frequency color like red. And because of that, apparently these stars require energy here or greater in order to excite electrons up to the next energy level. So all of the red and green photons we were shooting in just kind of passed through and did nothing. Another way to really think about the, the differences in energy between blue, violet, and uh, red is we can look a little bit beyond that. So beyond blue and violet, you have UV light. And beyond red, you have uh, infrared. Now, UV light is what gives you sunburns when you go outside. It burns your skin, literally. Uh, infrared, however, and that beyond that end of the spectrum, uh, that is microwaves. It's uh, when you take your cell phone and put it up to your ear and make a call, you don't feel a burning sensation because of the intense source of infrared uh, radiation coming from your device. You can tell just in your everyday experiences, blue and violet have much more energy than red does. So that's why um, the stars glow when exposed to purple and blue, but not red and green. Another logical question to ask might be why they glow from white light. And in this case, we have to remind ourselves that white light is a mix of all of the different colors of light, including violet and blue. So when you shine a light at uh, a white light at these, these stars, most of the photons just kind of pass through. But the violet ones and the blue ones uh, have enough energy to create a glow. And that's why these work.